Today, I had the bright idea to teach you something, so let's go ahead and... Well, I only had one bulb, so uh, there goes that metaphor. Now, this is our 1995 Ford F-150. It literally wants to die, but I refuse to let it. Sometimes when you're working on old garbage, well, bulbs don't work. Sometimes they fall on the ground for absolutely no reason to explode. Weird. And sometimes the circuit board or traces, well, they're not making good contact with the bulb socket. Now, a few months ago, I made a video. Oh, wow, that's a crazy. The video pops up like that right there in the middle of space. Anywho, that uh, we took the regular gauge cluster out, the standard model, and swapped in a tack gauge cluster. And once you see clearly, now that the rain is gone, I, I guess, well, this area, the LED is just not, you know, pulling its weight. Well, I just assume some of them were backwards, which is a trick you gotta remember if you got some bulbs not working on a gauge cluster or anything, actually, and you've got LEDs in there, swap them around the socket and see if that fires it off. Now, I recommend doing that before you even bother getting a multimeter out and start probing things on your body that, well, <laughs> need probed real good like. But that didn't fix my problems. And unfortunately, the high beam indicator, it's not working either. So watch me provocatively flick my multifunction switch back and forth. Yeah, don't see nothing weird here, except for the weird part. And as you can see, not a lot of that sweet, sweet high beam indicator action here. Now the first part of the repair, well, clearly that's first. Find the bulb socket on the back that matches the light that's not working on the front. From here, you're either gonna need to follow the traces visually on the back or use a meter set to ohms and probe from one end to the other to try to find it. Now, mind you, if the trace is damaged, you'll never find it. But it's probably fine. Most gauge clusters, well, they've got pretty easy circuitry to figure out what's going on. Now we need to probe the wire coming from your harness. Try to avoid using the pin on the front side and actually grab it from the back of the connector. That way you can determine if you're actually getting power there. If you're not seeing the respective power or ground that you'd expect, well, your problem is probably vehicle side, not really gauge cluster, but I've got 12 volts for my high beam wire, so something is happening in the gauge cluster to the wire. Now that I know voltage is present on the vehicle side, well, I'm just gonna work my way towards the bulb on the gauge cluster. And while doing my inspector gadget looking eyes, well, I found some corroded bulb sockets. But unfortunately, this bulb goes to the airbag light. Airbags don't matter, kids, these days. So I'm not gonna worry about it. But what I did find is classic Play 69, right out of the old-fashioned Playboy book. Well, the socket's not making good connection with the circuit board. Here it is with a meter. As you can see, this is kind of a good connection. If by good connection you mean pretty shitty and doesn't work, then yeah, it's perfect. Now you've really got three different options to fix this. Option A is, <laughs> it's the slutty dirty one, hold with me. You just solder the socket to the back of the gauge cluster. You're not getting that bulb out ever again, <laughs> but why would you? That's the next guy's problem. But also option A, well, solder some leads onto the good parts of the exposed circuit board then solder the other sides of the leads to the back of the socket. <laughs> oh yeah, that's real nice. And if you do it, well, you can still remove it to service it, because every 3,000 miles or so, I like to get in there and <laughs> give them a good licking. <laughs> what? I'm gonna take my soldering iron and tin up a little section of the circuit board. Now, make sure that your socket won't hit this spot well, when you're trying to attach it. So you might actually have to you know, take a razor blade and rip off a little bit of the coating that's actually covering up one of the traces and solder it on there. Then I'm gonna take a little piece of twin lean, tin up the ends of that thing too. Now, tinning is where you just take a little bit of solder and blob it into the end of the wire. That makes it so when you connect the two things together, they're already loaded with solder and you're not just overheating the crap out of whatever surface you're trying to connect together. You might be able to diagnose that maybe only your positive is failing or the only the negative side of the socket isn't making good contact, but I found if one of them is do it, just don't waste your time. Do them both at the same time, be done with it. And just go ahead and take a second and bask in the glorious that is you. Wow, you're looking real good today. Solid six out of five. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, just look at that body. Now plug your harness in, turn your lights on, do whatever you need to do to give this a good test. I actually recommend jiggling it around to see if you can recreate going over bumps because that's the most common problem I've run into. Slam that pick bitch back together and you're good to go until 
the next problem. And believe me, there's going to be more problems. I enjoy a good diagnostic session, especially when you actually figure something out at the end. <laughs> a lot of my projects just go unresolved into the ADHD uh, to-do pile. So, good we got something finished around here. Now, if you like this stuff, okay, weird flex, but do this thing that, yeah, oh yeah, that, that's, that's the one. And then comment below your favorite Ryan Reynolds movie. That way, if somebody's coming here and looking for actual information without watching the video, well, they will have no idea what's going on. Nothing like a jack stand on muddy ground to really take the edge off of the day. How will this glass get here?